Bora Pens, uh, and the way I like to think about affiliate marketing is that uh, the internet has turned the world into one small global village. So you will be operating, targeting your traffic from the US because they are the people who are known to buy online the most, but you are actually seated in your bed seat somewhere in Resambu. <laughs> 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 so it's that concept. The world is a global village. So you can do business with the Americans while you're still in Kenya. So uh, that is how we work in affiliate uh, marketing. So forgetting the clickbait title about Insider Secrets, because there are actually no secrets to making money with affiliate marketing, uh, let me first start by trying to explain who I am. Uh, so who is Patrick? I'm a young man, <coughs> as you can see, but I'm married. I uh, graduated uh, in college in 2012 with a degree in mass communication and uh, journalism. From 2012, I tarmacked until the early 2013 when I got a job. I got employed for one year and then I was like, nah, this thing is not for me. So from uh, 2014 when I quit my job, uh, came to 2014, I started my first niche website, which unfortunately was never successful. I earned like $15 only for the lifetime of the website, which was like uh, one year. So I registered the domain name like <coughs> April of uh, 2014, tried to make this thing called affiliate marketing work. I couldn't hack it. So by 2015, I dropped the domain name, but I didn't uh, drop the vision of being an affiliate marketer, of being my own employee, sitting at home and making your own money. So continued learning from uh, 2014, 2015. Come 2016, I started another niche website. So those were two straight years of learning. It was not easy. It was a lot of hassle. You're not employed. You're trying to make ends meet, trying this and that. Uh, but in 2016, I had my first major break with affiliate marketing. I started a website after learning for two years. Uh, those two years had instilled in me the knowledge that I needed to successfully make affiliate marketing work. And fortunately, it's that knowledge, although a little bit of it, that I want to share with you today. And we will start by defining affiliate marketing. For those who are still wondering maybe what's this animal that uh <coughs> we are calling affiliate marketing. So what's affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is simply a system of uh, business where a merchant, say this is uh, uh, the merchant, we will give him a name, maybe Ken, the English name that was uh, dropped. <laughs> 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 then the merchant has some products that he needs to sell. Uh, but then he cannot make a lot of sales by their own. So they need you. They need you to push the products in the market. So uh, they, they get to another person, the middle person here, called an affiliate network. An affiliate network is simply a group of, uh, a, a, a kind of a company that now connects the merchant with you. You as the publisher, the guy who is running your website on WordPress or your blog on WordPress, you are a publisher. Then there's the merchant, there's the affiliate network, and there is you. So the, you as an affiliate, you, pro you produce content, you review maybe this product that you want to affiliate with, products from the merchant connected by the affiliate network. Then you put this content on your blog. Maybe you are reviewing this pen. Uh, you are, what do we call this ki a kind of pen? Yeah. It's a it's a Mac or a felt pen, yeah? Uh, so maybe you are this huge fan of marker pens, yeah? Maybe you work with marker felt pens and felt pens and you really want guys to know which is the best, which is the best marker pen to buy. So maybe you review a, a list of them and you publish that content on your blog. On that content, you have a special link that you've been given by the affiliate network. 
to work with. So when a person comes and clicks on this link, it will take them to the merchant's website where they go and buy this pen and you get a commission from that. So that's the basic concept of affiliate marketing. But it gets interesting. Uh -huh. <coughs> I don't know anybody with a question about affiliate marketing up to there. So the history of affiliate marketing dates back uh, from way back in 1996, online affiliate marketing. That uh, was when Amazon, the big giant e-commerce website, Amazon, they popularized the idea of uh, affiliate marketing back in uh, 1996. And it has grown, it has grown. So many other companies have picked it up. There are so many affiliate networks that exist. And uh, next year we are estimating that they spend on affiliate marketing. Money that will be paid to affiliates, guys who publish content, will be in uh, the range of $13 billion. I don't know what kind of a stake you'll get from that, but there's a lot of money from affiliate marketing. And uh, there are so many affiliate uh, <coughs> marketing uh, programs. I'll get to them later. Also, uh, one thing is uh, when you're running into this field of, of affiliate marketing, you will find them referred by different names. It will be associate program, internet affiliate marketing, direct marketing, performance marketing, partner marketing, paper, pa paper performance marketing, and of course the popular referral program. Some of the affiliate uh, marketing, I uh, uh, already went through that. So some, uh, where do you come in? Oops, sorry. So where do you come in as uh, an affiliate marketing? I already went through that. Uh, you come in because you are a publisher, you have a site, you review products or you just write general content. Uh, maybe you, you, you're speaking about the adventures that you had in Samburu and the kind of camera that you are using. And when you mention a camera, maybe it's a Nikon or Canon, you have a link back to that product, maybe on the merchant site. And if a person comes and clicks on that special link and goes and buys that camera, you get a commission. So that's where you come in as an affiliate. You are a publisher. You basically publish content. And... Uh, when people read the content, like it, maybe trust you, uh, they buy through your links, you get a commission. So what are uh, the advantages of uh, affiliate marketing? Why would you want to become an affiliate marketer as opposed to maybe other lines of uh, <coughs> online work? For one, it's one of the ways of best ways of making money online. Seriously, it is. It's passive. It gets to a point where... It's totally passive. Right when, uh, right here when I was seated here, I think I've made around uh, $300 just seated in this conference hall. Why? Because I have my website, which is already there. There it's ranking. People are coming, they're reading content, they're getting interested in the content, they're clicking over to merchant sites and uh, money is trickling down into your account. So it's one of the best ways of making money online. I don't know how, how many of us are in self-employment how many work online? How many work online? Quite a number of us. Uh -huh. So, I don't know what you do online, but uh, I won't force you to become an affiliate marketer. It takes passion and it takes a lot of time. A lot of time. It sweats at first, but you get to enjoy the fruits later. So, uh, it you also get to work from home and then it has a low starting uh, capital. Like if you want to get started with affiliate marketing, all you will ever need is maybe your laptop, uh, money to register a domain name, which is uh, 99 cents, and maybe hosting, which you can get very cheaply nowadays. So it's, uh, the, 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 the startup capital is uh, really small. You won't sweat trying to raise capital to get started. And uh, affiliate programs are free to join. Most affiliate programs you will never pay to join an affiliate program. The only capital you need is the capital to sta get started as a web publisher, as a trust, uh, trusted web publisher. If you, if you can't write, maybe you will need to hire content developers. Yeah, so really the capital should not be an issue. Then uh, 
There are examples of uh, affiliate marketing sites so that you can see when we call, when we are talking about a niche site, when we're talking about an affiliate marketing site, what kind of a website are we talking about? How do you start it? Are these uh, like some, uh, some really out of this world website or what kind of websites are they? So I have examples here which you can maybe jot down if you are writing notes. Uh, the first example I have there is called Double Stroller Center, doublestrollercenter.com. I have uh, another example, babygearlab.com. Babygearlab.com. There is uh, sweethome.com, the sweethome.com, and there is the wirecutter.com. The last two examples are really huge, uh, <coughs> huge publishers, which you can learn from if you really want to grow big in affiliate marketing. They are quite huge in the space. They like write reviews about uh, almost everything. And then they are owned by these me big media companies. Don't know whether anybody has been following uh, this. Steven, maybe you can help me. They were Qatar the and uh, they were Qatar plus the Sweet Home. Who owns them? No, uh, the yes, they were bought by New York Times. They were started as, uh, as uh, small websites, but then they grew and they were bought for a lot of money, billions of shillings, just from the guys who had started them, writing reviews for products here and there. The other two examples are really like what we would uh, be doing as a normal guy is maybe when you're just starting, just uh, you, you, you just put yourself in a niche, a very specific niche. Like we have the doublestrollercenter.com. It's about these strollers for babies. <coughs> That's a guy who has started a website a niche website, we call them niche websites, um, affiliate niche sites, and he has decided to focus on only one topic about these double strollers. I don't know exactly what they are. The, the, the maybe it's the wheels that they are called double. And then we have Baby Gear Lab. That's another example of uh, a very specific niche website that only reviews things to do with uh, babies. So. Getting an insight, uh, you don't have to have something that is uh, out of this world. And then some of the some of the best known affiliate marketing uh, affiliate marketing network affiliate networks out there. We have a CPA marketing called Max Bounty. There's a company called Max Bounty. There's another company called Linkshare. There's Amazon Associates, which is the most popular and the one that I would recommend you guys if. Uh, you feel like you would like to get into this, I recommend starting off with Amazon Associates uh, because there are a few advantages to starting with Amazon Associates. It's uh, the, the conversion rate. There's something we call the conversion rate. The number of items that people will go and buy. Uh, wh when you send people over to a merchant website, how likely are they to buy? That's what we call the conversion rate. And Amazon Associates, Amazon has really worked on their conversion that they really know what they're doing uh, uh, as much as it uh, comes to converting site visitors into buyers. They really do very well with uh, <coughs> conversions. And then the other affiliate uh, network is called uh, CJ, Commission Junction. There's an affiliate network called Commission Junction. So those are a few of the examples and all of them are free to join. So if you have a good site, you write content and you'd like to monetize that content using affiliate, uh, affiliate marketing. Uh, these are some of the most recommended uh, networks that uh, you should join. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, going through most of it because uh, uh, I think my brother did a very good job at explaining most of it. So the affiliate marketing cycle, uh, still trying to explain the whole concept of affiliate marketing. So buyer looking for products. There's a buyer somewhere looking for products. Most of us go to the internet to do research before we can buy anything. Yeah? I don't know when was the last time you bought something without, first of all, maybe doing some research, especially if you're shopping online. So maybe you would say, an example of a product that uh, goes really well is maybe, maybe you want a bed for your uh, baby. So when you're wondering, maybe you want to shop online. So we could maybe to Google and type something like best toddler beds. So that's a buyer looking for a product. This is a person that is very ready 
to buy a product, the product that you recommend. So in case you've written about best toddler beds on your site, maybe you love babies, you can't uh, just uh, be able to see the baby sleeping on a bad bed, <laughs> and you write an article about best toddler bed, toddler beds, best baby mattresses, and all that. Those are called keywords. The, 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 the one I've mentioned best is this. They are called keywords, and they come in when people are looking for products. So a buyer will look for a product, then your site will appear. Uh, when they go for that product, when they're looking for that product, the best they can buy, fortunately, if you have optimized your site well enough, there's something called search engine optimization. If you are, your site is well optimized, then the buyer will come to your, the person looking for the product will come to your website, and then you will redirect them to where the product is being sold. Then you will get a commission. Uh, the, uh, the buyer will buy the product and you get a commission. <coughs> it's as simple as that. Buyer looking for product, your site where the affi affiliate, you have affiliate links, redirected to the product page, the merchant website, buys the product, you get a commission. Straightforward, right? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, let me get to the second part of this. The, the first part was mostly about explaining what an affiliate program is, and I hope so to Meshika. So the part two, how do you actually get now to the physical bit? How do you start your site and get into this affiliate marketing thing? So it's uh, really simple. It's a three-step thing. The first one, we call it uh, niche and keyword research. You have to research your keywords and the niche that you'll get to. Uh, a niche is uh, that circle, that area of specialization, where as a publisher, um, you specialize that uh, I'll mostly be writing on my blog about this. You may decide that I'll mostly be writing about wine racks. I'm a bakery racks or something else. That is your niche. You have to research. There's so much that goes into researching. Like you have to weigh the competition. How competitive is this niche? Who are the other people who are writing the same content as I am? Can I beat them in this game? That is part of niche research. You want to go where there is literal competition. You want to find that the people who are publishing information in that, sp in that space are not the big brands. They're not the likes of Forbes. They're, th they're not the likes of NY Times. They're not the likes of Huffington Post. You want to, to find a uh, site that are weak. Th th there's so much that goes into that. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time uh, uh, to, 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 to go into details about it. So you have to do your research. And then uh, the best niches uh, will usually be one where there are accessories available. So if uh, maybe you want to talk about uh, water purification, that could be a niche by itself. You want to talk about water purification. Are there accessories? How many products can, can I write on this niche? How many review products can I review? How, many, how, how much information does the ni this niche actually have? So you have to get a niche that have accessories available and maybe you can write a lot of content about it. Then uh, the bigger industry, I think that ties into that. And then uh, you have to get a niche that is not seasonal and a niche that is actually growing. Uh, niches grow and niches fade. You can get into something then find that uh, uh, it was a hype, like the Bitcoin thing, yeah? <laughs> then it comes sliding all the way down. So you have to find a niche that will actually be uh, growing, something that has potential to grow, something that's not a fad, something that will not come uh, tomorrow, today and then tomorrow, it's gone. Uh, you also have to avoid seasonal niches. If you want to make money all year round, you will have to avoid uh, seasonal niches. Seasonal niches are those where <coughs> maybe the products are only in on demand in uh, winter or summer. So what happens when it's autumn and spring? or it's not winter and you're writing about winter products, or it's not summer and you're writing about summer products. So you have to vo avoid uh, <coughs> seasonal niches if you'd like to make money all year round. But if you don't mind making money during winter only, or during summer only, you can go ahead and write, get a niche in those uh <coughs> seasonal 
seasonal markets. <laughs> so the next step, uh, that was the first step about getting started the affiliate marketing, doing niche research. The next step is about setting up your site, which is uh, really easy. I hope uh, if you are a developer in the house, you probably know this. You have to get a good domain name and hosting, basic, very basic. You have to create incredible long form content. Okay, nowadays, uh, and especially if you want to win over in this game of, of affiliate marketing, you cannot do with uh, <coughs> short article pieces, maybe 500 words, a thousand words is still short in some markets. So you really have to create incredible content, content that people want to read, but also make it long. Google is favoring long form content over short pieces of content. Uh, the best way to know whether you are writing content, if you get into this, is uh, maybe you are writing about uh, the best uh, basketball shoes. Try to see the first person, the, the sites that are ranking on the first page of Google. When you type like best basketball shoe, how many words are those sites, uh, the content on that page, on those pages, how many words is it? Try to match that or even uh, go deeper than that. Uh, then uh, in setting up your site also, optimize your site for the keywords you are targeting like uh, your content must be backed up by keywords. There's something that we call keywords and there are tools to find what are keywords. Eh? There are words that people use over and over and over again. People in a certain niche, in a certain market, when they're looking for information online, they will always, almost always use the same kind of words almost always use the same kind of words. So it's about if it's about uh, best, uh, best camera for nature photography, you'll find that that is a keyword on its own. People who are interested in that type of uh, gadgets, they will always like use those words. So you'll find that maybe in a month, we have people typing that same keyword, people from different locations, like 5,000 people typed into Google, best, uh, best camera for nature photography. 5,000, 10,000, they're called keywords. And you have to really like know what keywords you're targeting and make sure that your content is well optimized for them. Then uh, the final step into this journey is uh, to promote your site, rank, and uh, of course, bank. So the reason why we are doing this. So how do you promote your site? Uh, um, uh, the, the, the Amos, I, th I believe that's his name, the guy who was here talked about creating backlinks for your content. There are various ways <coughs> to create backlinks for your content. I won't go so much deep into that. So if you really need to promote your site, rank and bank. Ranking by ranking, uh, we are referring to uh, the fact that uh, if guys type a certain keyword, your page will be the number one, two, three position up there on the Google search results. Google has a way of grouping those and uh, it's usually through what we call SEO. And uh, the, the, the main part of SEO and the most effective part of SEO is called link building, building backlinks back to your site. Getting somebody, maybe you have a blog, I contact you, link to me, and other strategies that uh, my brother there talked about. Then you can also share your content on social media. And also, if you're in some really good niches with some big money, you can consider paid advertising for your content. You can do Facebook advertising, Google AdWords advertising, Bing ads. There's so many channels of advertising that are available nowadays. So if you gauge your content, your niche, and see that uh, the it can pay back, it can give me return on investment for the money I'll spend on advertising, it's the easiest route to take. But it's also one that can uh, sink you very easily and make you bankrupt. So if, if you don't have deep data on the industry that you're getting into, uh, maybe consider SEO, link building, and uh, social media sharing. And I think uh, that will be will mark the end of my short presentation.